This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a small, is a premium small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company located in Perrysburg, Ohio. They are fair trade certified USD organic and integrity is their core value. Coffee, some coffees available in K-Cup, gift cards available and free shipping over $50 and you can save more with their subscription service. Find out more over at ironbeancoffee.com where you can find all the different flavors that they have to offer. Some some coming and going, as Jared will talk about in the middle of the episode here. Yeah, I will. Lots of great flavors over, over at ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that's Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle. We're going to have some fun today. This This will be a very silly, silly season episode yes sir yes we're gonna sir. we're gonna try and predict the depth chart and like we're trying to do this in january which we're is seven stupid. months out jared we're only stupid. seven months out this is stupid this is a stupid <laughs> exercise and i'm looking forward to it in fact you all could right, say it's silly all right let's let's get on with it we've got barbecue back here you're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm feeling silly, Jared. How are you? <laughs> feeling silly. Silly season. This is a silly season episode. We're going to do something very silly, Kyle. We're going to try and predict the depth chart. Uh, seven months, you said before the episode, and I did, did not fact check you. Uh, seven months before the season starts. Uh, we we haven't even, there's not even a spring camp yet. There could still be transfer portals, both coming and going transfer portals. Um, some of the freshmen aren't freshmen aren't even on the team yet. Kyle, this is a silly this is a silly exercise. What the hell are we doing? That fits our agenda. We're oh, silly. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. All right, Kyle. Let's not screw around. Let's uh, let's get into it. Um, I'll let you drive where you want to where you want to start. Honestly, I want to. You know, I like to mix things up. I know you have a certain order here on our um, on our show notes here. I'm going to start with the defense here. The defense, All right. which is which is the area that a lot of Buckeye fans are really wanting to see change after what we've seen last sure. year. We're already step one, coaching changes. Discussed about Lots that already. Them. Lots of them. Feel feel like it's a uh, fresh of Bel Air scene where it's just. Just the one coach just looking around like, all right. Coach Johnson looking around the room, wondering where just all his me. buddies went. Just me. So, all right. Uh, we got a, we got a, I think we'll see some, a lot of familiar faces. Obviously we're losing uh, quite a few on the defensive side, but let's, let's talk about the defensive side and let's start. Not let's that start many up. really. Let's, I think there's going to be a the lot fr- of familiar faces. Let's start with the front. Let's start yeah. with the, the defensive ends. Lots yeah. of talent here. Lots of talent here, Jared. So who who do you have as your starting defensive ends? So it's sounding like we're going to have like a quote unquote Leo position, which is kind of your rush defensive end. This is like your dedicated pass rusher might be a tad bit of a linebacker, depending upon the call play. Um, so here I have Zach Harrison starting. I have Jack Sawyer as the backup. But I, 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 I foresee a heavy split. I foresee a heavy split between the two. I think we see a lot. I, I mean, maybe, maybe downright 50, 50 between the two as far as reps. But mm-hmm. I, I think they probably give the starting lod, starting nod to Zach Harrison and Kyle as a bonus prediction, as a bonus prediction, Zach Harrison gets to wear the number zero this year. Ooh. Ooh, I was really hoping to see a uh, uh, the the number zero position uh, last year didn't quite well. He actually, right. actually yes and no, but with the patch, yeah, he had the patch. Yes, so well, actually, I think yeah, I agree. I think Zach Harrison is a perfect person for this year to wear the number zero. Heck, maybe I'll, I'll save it to another person. I think would be a great person too. All right. But, yeah, Zach Harrison on the defensive side. I think Zach Harrison would be great on the defensive side there. Uh, 
and I think and I think cross from Harrison, I mean, I think it's one of your two talented uh, defensive ends, and I think I think I'm going to give the nod to uh, JT Tuimalau as the other de- starting defensive end. Yes. Okay. So, uh, so then, where do you have Jack Sawyer? Then, do you have him? Do you agree with me? Do you have Sawyer behind Zach Harrison at the Leo end, or do Honestly, you have him behind JT? I, I think I think he's going to go. If you want to put the actual like in writing, yeah, I'll put him behind Zach Harrison. But yeah. honestly, he is, he's like starter Zach, starter JT, and then first out Jack Sawyer, and then uh, Javante uh, as the, 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 yes, as the next uh, rotating out. Or rotating yeah, I mean, in, you, that is. when, when you're talking about like your defensive end versus your Leo, your defensive end is, Typically a, a little bit of a bigger body guy, a little bit more of a power rushing guy, whereas your Leo is a little bit more of a speed rushing guy. So I, I just think from my body type and athleticism standpoint, yeah, I, I, Jean I, yeah, Baptiste I think, uh, and JT are your, are your bigger body sort of, you know, Cam Hayward esque players. I mean, uh, Gangling says that JV would be a good Leo, and I agree. I think I think any of these, maybe not so much uh, Tui Malawa. Uh, Tui Malawa is a big defensive end and just able to just to uh, just manhandle a lot of the uh, tackles and guards. Right. But I I still stand behind. I think Sawyer will be the first to come in if it's Zach or uh, Tui Malawa to be subbed out i think sawyer could fit in on either side uh yes but bucky esquire i do think tyler friday is like that fifth guy if there's an injury or whatever else i do think tyler friday is that fifth guy should he return okay all right let's let's talk about the interior here this is this is a position that I, me personally i think ohio state really needs to prove this is a lot of people like to complain about the linebackers and they really came along towards the end of last year but i really think hate to say but i think last year the defensive tackles were not up to par right from what we were hoping they would be last year so i I think defensive scheme has a lot to do with it but please continue agreed agreed yes but the interior here though i I would start with the three tech here uh i'm gonna give the nod to um tyleek williams here yeah um I love Hamilton. I love Hamilton. I yep. I feel fine. I'd feel fine with either one, but yep. I'd say right now I'd give I give the nod to to Williams. Uh Williams Tyleek is I I think I think the bigger impact player. I think Ty Hamilton is absolutely a solid starter, but I think Tyleek Williams is a legit difference maker, a playmaker. Um he has the body type of a nose tackle, but the athleticism as a three tech, which I think makes him a perfect three tech. Um, but he could also play nose tackle if you wanted slash needed him to. Um, I like Ty Hamilton a lot. I think, I, I think you see a, a decent rotation between the two of them. Still. I think Ty Lick gets the nod at the start. Um, but you still see a lot of Ty Hamilton play because he's still a very, very good player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just trying to find, yeah, six three three fifteen all all Tyreek Williams. Yeah, and there was definitely plays. I, I agree with Jared right. you, when he when he came when he came in, he made his presence known. I mean, three fifteen all three fifteen of him. Yes, his presence sure. was known there. <laughs> yes, Buckeye Esquire. Buckeye Esquire says Teron Vincent. Teron Vincent. As the one tech, we assume absolutely. Um, and that goes right into the yep. That goes right into the next R is the nose tackle. Yep. Yeah. Jared and I both have them both as our starter for that nose tackle position. Oh, and funny! You forget Jaron Cage Kabuto says. Oh, did I forget? Or do I have him as the backup? That's right. I have him as the backup. <laughs> Don't forget, he says. He he edited it. Um. Yeah, no, C- Cage, I think, is definitely your number two at the nose tackle position. Um, who's the other defensive tackle, true freshman, that came in last year? 
Um, oh, I'm going to blank on his name. Hold on. Thankfully, I have my my recruiting sheet open. Um, uh, Mike Hall, I assume you're talking Michael. about. Yep, Michael Hall from Streetsboro, Ohio. Yeah. Um, yeah, Michael Hall, I think, can be a contributor this year if there's an injury, uh, so on and so forth. Like, it's it's totally possible that that we see him be a contributor this year. Um, it kind of just depends upon how deep into the defensive end rotation they go. Um, and I'm not even really sure because... He's either a big three tech or a smaller nose tackle. So I'm not even a hundred percent sure where he fits in on the depth chart. Like, where is he? Cause he, I think he was under 300 when he first came into camp, but that that's like his high school weight. That's his recruit weight. He's been in the system for, for a little while now. So he might be up to like nose tackle weight now. Uh, so if cage isn't, where he needs to be, or if there's an injury, then you could easily see him work his way into the two depth, uh, into, excuse me, into the two deep. Uh, I would assume it nose tackle, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Yep. All right. Let's move on to the linebackers here. Jared, dare I say, I really like the linebackers this year. I really like the linebackers this year. I really, really like the linebackers this year. Yeah, blast me. Exactly. Yes, game. No, game. no, 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 no. It's it's yeah. fine. And I I I'm gonna die on this hill, guys. I am going to die on this hill that right, the linebackers this... are really, really good. All right, let's it let's is a it has been a scheme issue, not a talent issue at linebacker. Mm -hmm. The Tommy right, Eichenberg let's... we saw in the Rose Bowl, I believe, is the top. <laughs> I will die on as many hills as I damn well please. The view is nice. <laughs> if the hill's tall enough, you get a sunrise and a sunset. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, the I, I the Tommy Eichenberg we saw in the Rose Bowl, I believe, is the Tommy Eichenberg that can be. And I think we put him in the right scheme, and I think Ohio State's defense or, or the Ohio State's linebackers will be great. Speaking of speaking of that, before we do the uh, the linebackers, Jared, uh, a lot of people really. Um, complaining about when during his time at Ohio State, Pete Werner killing yeah, exactly. it in the NFL right now. Killing, killing it in the NFL. So tell tell me it's not scheme. Tell me it's not scheme. Just look at what Pete Warner, Pete Warner's all as a I almost said freshman, as a rookie. As a rookie, looks like a better pro than he ever was a college player. Hmm. All right. All right. Let's jump right in. Let's jump into the linebackers. Mike, the Mike position here. I as, as much as as much as you just um, gave praise to Tom, Tommy Eichenberg, yeah, I do like Cody Simon better. I, yeah, I, I like Cody Simon better though. I, <laughs> I think Pete, I, I think Tommy Eichenberg is a solid Big Ten linebacker. Um, I he'd be, he'd be he'd be really good against certain certain teams like maybe like the Northwesterns or a very run heavy uh type of um big right. 10 team uh yes um but i i still think there's a bit lacking as far as pass coverage goes so i in mm -hmm. in that with that said i i'm going to prefer cody simon here i think he's more athletic i think he has more of a playmaking mentality to him so i am going to give cody simon the nod i think we still yep. see tommy eichenberg on the field though yep and then on the outside, Jared, I still love, still love his name. Still, uh, Steel Chambers, Steel Chambers as your outside linebacker. And who do you have? Who do you have as a backup? Because I, I think you and I ha are on the same agreement here. I want to say who I have as the backup, but I want to say this: I'm not. This is this is my Kyle Winston Notre Dame game, September third. Is that right? September 3rd, yes. Buckeye Zach says yes. September 3rd, the starting outside linebacker will be Steel Chambers. But I think you get a few weeks in September 2nd, whenever it is. You guys know what I'm saying. It's third. Third. Um, 
before too long, this is the same thing I was saying last year, by the way, exact same thing I was saying last year about uh, Travion Henderson, where I said, well, you know, week one, Master Teague is going to be the starter. But, but, but after a few weeks, maybe a month into the season, after a few weeks, maybe a month into the season, the, the, the job will be stolen by CJ Hicks. CJ Hicks eventually becomes your starter. I, by the end of the season, I think CJ Hicks becomes your starting outside linebacker. I like Seal Chambers. I like Seal Chambers a lot, but CJ Hicks, I think, is next level, has next level potential. Uh, I think CJ Hicks ends up stealing the starting spot. And if he doesn't steal the starting spot, he's definitely going to be stealing a ton of reps, an absolute metric shit ton of reps. But I think he actually ends up stealing the starting spot before too long. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I saw I saw like to steal chambers until it's his to lose. Uh well CJ Hicks might lose it for him. I, I said it last year and I'll say it again. <laughs> Ironically, also because of a linebacker. Give me a guy who steals starting spots. Don't give me a guy who waits for starting spots. Give me a guy who steals starting spots. All right. The bullet position here. Yeah. Uh, One of the consistent bright spots in last year's defense was Ronnie Hickman. Uh, This is his spot. Um, I, and I don't even know if it's a bullet or if it's just like the other outside linebacker or if it's the cover outside line. I don't know what terminology we're using here. If it's just like, well, this is your, this is your will and this is your Sam. So maybe it's not a bullet. Maybe it's a Sam. Maybe it's a cover linebacker. I don't know what the fuck terminology we're using nowadays, but whatever that spot is, I I think it belongs, I believe, uh, yeah, it belongs to Ronnie Hickman. Okay. And then, and then the backup, I, Yes, gangland, like the Viper position, a range linebacker, just the other outside line. No, not cover safety gangland. We we have a cover safety coming. Mm-hmm. And then the I think star, the star. Too- yes, these are all these are all terms that are used for this spot. And I think the backup you would have there would probably be Court Williams then. Uh Court Williams, especially if it's a bullet, especially mm-hmm. if it's in that safety-ish spot. Uh, or they might just move Court Williams up to linebacker. Um, again, I think it really just depends upon exactly what this spot is. Mm-hmm. But if, uh, but yeah, I think Court Williams is is the guy we put there for now. All right, uh, moving quickly here to the defensive backs. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you take charge here. What do you got for the defensive backs? Uh, Denzel Burke and and Cam Martinez. Uh, they were bright spots on the defense last year. Excuse me, not Cam Martinez. Cameron Brown. Excuse me. Cameron Brown. Uh, yeah, th- those are your start. When, when Cameron Brown was healthy, he was tremendous. Um, and Denzel Burke was amazing. Just amazing last year. He was a true freshman. Amazing last year. Um, lots of good cornerbacks in the in the wings who could potentially be like the third corner or just your backups. Um, Legend Cavazos, Jordan Hancock, J.K. Johnson. um, Lots of lots of different guys who could. Yeah. Thank you, Kabuto. How dare I misspeak? How dare I? Uh, Yeah. um, Yeah, there's. By the way, there, you you say how dare you misspeak? They'll legitimately just be like people in the YouTube comments. Well, not so much now, but back when we were on the scoop, we'd just be like, "These guys don't even know the players' names." I misspoke. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, lots of good corners. Oh, I I don't know. Did you? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, you did. Uh, Lots of good corners. Uh, I think they could roll four, maybe even five deep in the cornerback rotation. But your number one and your number two are, are Burke and Brown. And we don't and we don't know the that. status of Seven Banks right now. That's that his yep. mysterious season has now turned into a mysterious off season. Yep, agreed. All right, and the safeties. We're gonna. 
um, we have the deep safety and the cover safety. So I think the deep safety, as long as he's healthy and comes back, Josh Proctor. Yep. Absolutely. Deep safety, Josh Proctor. Um, and now and I'm going to say it this time, and I'm going to say it correctly. I'm going to say it correctly this time. Cameron Martinez. Aha, uh-huh, I said it right this time. I think Cam Martinez is probably your backup deep safety. Uh, Tanner McCa- Gangland brings up Tanner McAllister. I actually have Tanner McAllister in the cover safety position. Uh, Mm -hmm. what may have been called a strong safety in the past, um, cover safety, whatever term you want to use. Uh, actually that's where I have Tanner McAllister starting this year. Yeah. Um, I actually have until kind of like what you were saying with, uh, with Hicks trying to, um, overtake the overtake chambers in the will. I have ransom right now as your starting safety. Maybe McAllister will come around and take that away from ransom, but Right now, as of right now, I, I have Ransom as as your starter. I don't disagree with you for the record. Um, I think that's a fairly 50-50 call. Um, I, I gave it to the guy who knows the defensive coordinator and who the defensive coordinator knows. Um, yep. Uh, right. <laughs> by the way, you guys are already jumping the gun. Seven Banks and Harry Miller just renting a condo somewhere being mysterious. Harry Miller shredding a guitar. Uh, Harry Miller at guard. Y'all are already starting in on the Harry Miller conversation, and I like it. We're going to talk about the offense, but first, Kyle. But first, uh, let's get our second read in for the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company, I already told you, veteran-owned, um, marine-owned, Marine family, um, the local Ohio up in that Toledo area coffee company. Um, I I don't even, I feel like I'm always talking about their coffee and I'm always telling you the stuff selling out and you need to jump on it. And I, I, I'll be honest. I don't know how many of y'all are listening to me. I don't know how many of y'all are listening to me. Um, but you, you do need to actually hurry up and jump on these. Um, the (laughs) at least one i know you do gangland and and i know i know a few of you do um for example i've been telling you guys hey guys that whole shebang it's really great it's a great sampler that whole shebang it's a great sampler it's a great sampler guess what it's sold out i warned you i was like that that sampler is a great deal you better jump on it while you can you better jump on it while you can. That's a great deal. That's a great deal. And guess what? You didn't. Maybe you did. Maybe you did. Some of you did. I bet at least one person listening to this did. And you're welcome. <laughs> but some of you didn't. Some of you are like, ah, I bet it'll still be there next week. I, I bet it'll still be. And then what? What? Ha- where are you at now? You're without your samplers. But that's okay. If, if you don't have your samplers and you don't know what to do, um, I'm going to, I'm going to offer you this, try out that, try out the Nordic trio. You're going to have to buy three big bags of coffee to, to pull it off, but I believe in you. You can do it. Try out that Nordic trio. You have the Loki, which is an Ethiopian, uh, light to medium roast. It's either a really light medium roast or a really dark light roast, depending upon how you choose to see that. Um, and then you can jump over. If you want something a little darker, you can get to the Thor, the Thor is a medium dark roast. It's either a light dark roast or a dark medium roast, depending on how you... And so you can jump on that. And then there's the Odin. Dad's the darkest. Dad's the darkest. You, you, The Odin is a straight up dark roast coffee. I call it the Nordic Trio. Um, and by the way, Kyle, they are all, at the time of the recording, $2 off. What a perfect time to try out that Nordic trio. They're $2 off. All three of them. Odin be praised. That is right, Buckeye Zach. Odin be praised. They are all currently $2 off. Has the scarcity increased price, if not a great selling point? Uh, No, the the sampler was the same price all the way through. And I had your backs, everyone. It just, did you listen? I took you to the water, but did you drink the coffee? That's the question. So, uh, <laughs> you can find your new favorite coffee over at Iron Bean Coffee. Oh, I have two yeses. 
I have two yeses in the chat. Over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, offense, Jared. Offense. Kyle, who's your starting quarterback? This this uh, is it, Kyle. This see, is your moment. Let's see. Let's see. Hot take it's, time. It's, Hot take time. This is your moment. Where's Nomad? Hey, hey, guys, hey, guys, hey guys, where's Nomad at? Is, is, he, is he in he's here? Not, he's not in the chat. Nomad's not in the chat. All right. All right. I, di- I didn't want to upset, upset him, but it's it's uh, it's CJ Stroud. <laughs> uh, that's Stuart <laughs> who gets mad at CJ Stroud. Uh, however, you do currently have Buckeye Zach in the room who's mad that it's not Jagger LaRue. Who, by the way, I don't know if you know this. He's in the transfer portal. I don't know if he's gone anywhere yet. He might come back, but he is he is currently in the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. What about Tathan? Tathan is is off making shit crypto somewhere or something. I don't know. He's pursuing business opportunities, which whenever <laughs> a semi-famous screw-up, and I'll call him a screw-up. He's not a college kid anymore. Whenever a s- semi-famous screw-up uh, in the athletics world fails, he does one of two things. He creates an energy drink company or he creates an alt shit coin. So we'll, well find here, out. Here, well, here, here's an interesting thing. So Ohio State currently only has three scholarship quarterbacks, Stroud, McCord, and Brown. That that yeah. worries me a little bit. I like to get a fourth quarterback in there somewhere. In, in, in that order, by the way. Uh, yes. The, I still think Ohio State should get a fourth quarterback somewhere. Just, just as a safety, just as a safety net. But, but yeah, I'm. There's no question. Stroud, McCord, then Brown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. That's your order. Um, I think they'd like to, if at all possible, find a, another. Isn't um. Crap. What's his name? Crap. His name. Oh, I can't think of his name. This is a a walk on from California who had offers to play elsewhere. Is he still on the team? I can't think of his name. Oh, uh, JP. JP. Andre. Yeah. Uh, did he put his name in the transfer portal as well? What? That's a good question. JP Adondra. Uh, yeah, I th- I think so too, Gangland. I just don't remember. Um, if if not. I think he's portaling as well. I just don't remember for sure. But by the way, just because you put your name in the portal doesn't mean you're leaving. Especially those two, they're not Mm -hmm. transfer. He is in the transfer portal. Um, You can, yeah, you can put your name out into the transfer portal, then not transfer, which if you're not a scholarship athlete and you're looking to get a scholarship is exactly what you should do. So, you know, one of those two might come back and I would count either of them as good as a, like random senior transfer transfer portal quarterback. All right. All right. We got to get moving here. Jared yeah, yeah. running backs, running uh, backs. Henderson, then Williams there. There's no question there. Henderson, then Williams. Yep. Uh, no probably question. prior is your third running back. Uh, gangland. I don't know who, which one of us said it first, but yes. What about Crowley? Where does Crowley fit in? Crowley. <sighs> Crowley's got to stay healthy, man. He's got to stay healthy. Um, and he hasn't. I like Crowley, but yeah. I agreed. I do too. I do too, man. Um, some guys it doesn't work out for. It's like, you know, it's like Bab. And like, mm-hmm. he's not going to be in our wide receipt. We're in name six wide receivers and I'm not going to include him. I don't know if Kyle is. Um, All right. Well, let's 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 do the wide receivers. Let's do the easy one here. The slot, <laughs> the slot. I, position by the way, here. I don't know how easy this is. Well, okay, go, go finish your thought. Well, it's it's JSN for for your uh, for your slot, and then I think behind JSN, I really like Emeka to to fill in there. Uh, I, I like what I've seen from him the past few games. I think he's really coming along. But it's it's JSN's obviously there. Uh, but here you, here's you here's disagree? why I think it's maybe not that obvious, Kyle. Okay. And by the way, I agree with you. I have JSN at the slot wide receiver. But but here here's the potential curveball I'd like to throw at you. What if he gets moved to Z? What if 
So right now I have the three starters, Fleming at Z, Harrison Jr. at X, and at slot JSN. What if it's JSN at Z, Marvin Harrison Jr. at X, and Emeka Abuka in the slot? And uh, Gangland says, and what if it's a mech at Z? I think that's also a possibility. These are all possibilities. Uh, I, I think to me, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Jackson Smith and Jimbo are starters. Period. Yes. Done. Yep. Over with. I don't know. Actually, I feel pretty good that Marvin Harrison Jr. is at the X. I was about to say, yeah. I just don't know in what spots. Eh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably your ex-wide receiver. Outside of that, though, I think it's a sh just a complete crapshoot. I think it's a total crapshoot. JSN will start. I'm not 100% sure where. Julian Fleming is going to get a ton of rotation. I'm not 100% sure where, although I do see him pretty much as a Z. Um, and Omeka Ibuka will see a ton of time. But I'm not 100% sure where. He, I think he could be a Z or a slot. In the same way that Jackson Smith and Jimba could be a Z or a slot. Yeah. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a solid answer. I have Fleming at Z and I have G. Scott Jr. behind him. I'm. This is maybe my one big swing in the depth chart prediction here is that I am moving G Scott jr. Back to wide receiver. That that's like, I think that's the one real stretch I'm, I'm taking in this depth chart is that I'm moving G Scott G Scott jr. Back to wide receiver. Uh, then at X, I have Harrison jr. And I have Jaden Ballard behind him. And then at slot, I have in Jimba and Emeka Ibuka. All right, I got I got in this slot JSN and Ibuka. The X I have uh, Harrison Jr. and I have Jaden Ballard. Yeah, as Same. as the backup, and then the Z I have Fleming starting, and then right now, right now I think I have Cameron Bob as, as the backup. Uh, stay healthy. Yes, I uh, I mean I'm sorry, but just. I, I hope you're right, Kyle, for, I, I don't know if anyone would deserve it more than him. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm just okay. not optimistic. Now the position I'm worried about on the offense this year is the tight end. You, you lose record record records yeah. gone here. Mitch Rossi came back. Rossi's back. I think that's huge. That's huge for, for this team, but I still, I still like Cade Stover. I, I like what I've seen from Stover. He needs to continue to improve, but I, man, I, I think we're going to see a Cade lot Cade Stover, of... I think, is back at linebacker. Mm. Yeah, if if he is back over at linebacker, man, this is... I don't really... It's tight end. This The tight ends this year is... I, I like really Joe down. Royer. I, he, we've not seen him. We've not seen him a ton, but I like Joe Royer. Um, I like his potential. And I also think that they're going to hit something up in the transfer portal. I th I think Ohio State would really love to bring in a a transfer portal tight end, but we just don't have that name yet. Um, yeah, it's so I think Mitch Ro right. I think Mitch Rossi ends up being your backup tight end. And I think someone from the transfer portal ends up being your starting tight end. But uh, I don't have that name yet. So for right now, I'm going to go Rossi, then Royer. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I think we're going to see. I said Royer. I, and uh, I, I put I put Scott. I moved Scott back to wide receiver personally, Gangland. I don't know about Kyle. My I moved him back to wide receiver. Yeah, I. I don't think we're going to see a lot of uh, like a lot of. Um, 11 uh, personnel this year. I think we're, I think we're going to see, I don't think we're going to see as many 11 personnel. I, I, I think we'll see a lot more, maybe uh, four wide receivers. I, I mean, Ohio state did that a lot, but with Ruckert as one of them, but I, I think we're going to see a lot more of the 
another wide receiver get a lot of time this this year. <laughs> Dang Land says, I want to see five wide. How dare you take Henderson off the field? Yes. <laughs> How dare Hen- you? <laughs> Henderson or Williams. <laughs> No, you split him out. Okay, but the package, that's still that's still a 10 package, though. That that's is. still a running back on the field. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right, Jared Slobs. These this slobs. Is, this, <laughs> this is sketchy. This is very sketchy. Um, Paris Johnson Jr., left tackle. So Terry. <laughs> Harry. Yes. Nice. Paris Johnson Jr. at left tackle. 100%. Yes. Dwan Jones, right tackle. 100%. 100%. Uh, I, I don't know what to... I really am not 100% what to do at that point. Why? Uh, Harry Miller is uh, really just another... He, the, mis, the, the mystery of Harry Miller continues. Um, If you told me he entered the transfer portal uh, the day after we recorded this, I'd believe you. If you told me that he was named the starting center the day after we recorded this, I would believe you. If you told me that he was named the starting left guard the day after we recorded this, I would believe you. I have no idea what's going on with Harry Miller. I, I, I don't know. Say, let's just say he's in right now. Let's just say he's he's playing now. He's not transferring. How would how would you how would you do this here? Because right now, left yes, guard, Paris Johnson, J- Paris Johnson Jr. left tackle, Dewan Jones right tackle. I think the right guard, right guard. I like I like Matthew Jones there. Okay, I like here. Here's the thing, Matt Jones highly versatile, right? So here here's what I'm thinking. If Harry Miller comes back and starts on this team, I'm putting him at left guard. I'm putting Matthew Jones at right guard. But if no Harry Miller, I think I have Matt Jones at left guard and Donovan Jackson at right guard. That's fair. Yes. And yeah, uh, Kabuto, he absolutely is. Uh, He's uh, Kabuto says Matt Jones is a team player. Yeah. Highly versatile team player. 100%. That that yeah, is no, you, that you, is you, that is who Matt Jones is, um, and I, I quite frankly, you, Kyle, we could give him the zero as well. I think I think no, I think you nailed it. If Harry Miller is back and is going to be play, I think I have Miller at left guard, I have Whipler at center, and then Matt Jones at the right guard. But if Miller is not there, I agree with Jared. Matt Jones, left guard, and then Don, Donovan Jackson at right guard. And by the way, in my official depth chart that I that I wrote out for this, I put I put uh, Ben Chrisman as the backup left guard, but Donovan Jackson's your backup guard. Left, right, doesn't matter. Um, and if like if something happens to Luke Whipler and they need to move. Harry Miller over to center. If they don't move Jacob James up, but instead they move Harry Miller over Donovan Jackson comes in. He's he's the sixth man. He's the sixth man on the interior. um, I don't know if you move. Yeah. You, you, you're not going to move Donovan Jackson. I don't think to the outside, Um, which does bring us to what is. Yeah. uh, Gangland says tackles. You have Vamahi, you have Vamahi and you have Josh Fryer which is concerning um, because they're both pretty unproven at this point. Vamahi's played some at, at the interior. Uh, we've not seen e- either of them put in real time at tackle. And that's real concerning to me. And if a tackle gets hurt, I'm very concerned. And quite frankly, not, not for this season, not for the 2022 season, but for the 2023 season, I don't know where Ohio State's tackles are coming from. Um, that is a real big concern for me. Is I think they're I think they're incredibly deep at uh, at the interior. Uh, Harry Miller, Ben Chrisman, Luke Whipler, Jacob James, Matthew Jones, Donovan Jackson. I like all these guys. My concern is the depth at the offensive tackle. Paris Johnson Jr. and Don and Dwan Jones, they got tackle on lock. 
Like there's no one that can touch those two guys, both because those two are so good, but also there's I, there's nothing behind them that I feel great about. And now, the, again, I want to reiterate that that has a lot to do with the fact that they're unproven and not that I'm saying, like, I'm not saying they're bad. And a lot of it has to do with them being unproven. Yep. Just ask Jackson to grow three inches. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen, I get a lot of emails saying that you can grow three inches overnight. Um, I just don't know how many of them can be believed. Take this pill and gain three inches. Exactly, gangland. You get the emails too. <laughs> Okay, um, that is that's that it. is our that that is our depth chart that is our early early Kyle that is not our depth chart that is not our depth chart Noah Ruggles and Jesse Murko Of course no struggle Ruggles as your kicker There you go Ooh ooh here we go and who's, who's your be return the returner guy? Ooh who's going to be the return guy I like Fleming. I like what I saw Fleming at the end of the year. I, I, I think you give Fleming a shot here. Him I, think, or I think you put, put, put Fleming as your kick returner and uh, put, man, I almost, I almost want to say JSN as your punt returner. I'm leaning Abuka. I'm not big on putting starting wide receivers as returners. I just like injury risk hey, and wearing hey player evan Pryor's a uh, gangland says evan Pryor. i think that's a conversation worth having i think you give him a shot i mean i'm think i'm thinking of the mid to late 2000s when yes. we had your two starting your two starting Ky Ky wide Kyle's receivers back there kyle's favorite story both returning Hunt returns. So give Kyle, me back the two returners. Kyle loves team. nothing more than two punt returners. Give I it love to nothing me more day. than you position battles blocker. along the offensive you, line. Kyle loves nothing more than the concept of having two punt returners. You get an extra blocker back there. Yes. Yes, 100%. All right. Okay. All, right. All right. Let's end the episode here, Jared. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, come join our Discord server. Uh, come be a patron. Get early access to episodes. Get ex uh, access to our exclusive channels in the Discord server. Um, uh, there's a weekly exclusive version of the podcast where we talk about nonsense and answer viewer questions um, or listener questions, depending upon how you consume this. Um that's that's uh come come be a patron it's as little as three dollars a month uh and you can buy uh the whole 12 months up front and you save something like i don't know 10 11 12 percent it's like 32 dollars for an entire year uh it, it helps us grow uh it helps us to reinvest in the podcast Kyle and i aren't getting rich off of this believe me uh but having those resources allows us to reinvest into the podcast. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, two things. Um, one, we missed at the top of the sh top of the show here. Gangland. Jared. I took this pill and my podcast gained three new patrons. <laughs> Will Smith jr. Yes, sir. Will Smith jr. I mean, now we're doing a recruiting to the episode after this, but sure. Go ahead. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Will Smith Jr. is now committed to the Buckeyes. A uh, lot, a lot of people really excited about this. I think a lot of it more just nostalgia than anything else, but um, I, what's your thoughts? I, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, outsource my thoughts. Uh, Mark Givler over at Buckeye Scoop says he sees a lot of BB landers in Will Smith Jr. And I like that. I like so that. I'm, I, I will, uh, I will outsource my thoughts to Mark Givler and uh, say, I'll just reiterate that. That's what I'll say. 
Um, uh, he's a defensive no. tackle, not a defensive end. His dad was a defensive end. He's probably more of a three tech defensive tackle. Yes. All right. And the, and the last thing I have here, Jared, is we got to support our local Ohio teams. Those Joey Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals. Those Cincinnati Bengals moving on to the AFC championship. This is, and this was a question. This was a question. Uh, they have officially like, won more playoff games this year than they have the past 30 years combined. Yeah. Um, I forget where it was here, but I'm going to answer it anyway. I, I think it was Nomad that asked this. And when was the last time that both number one seeds lost in the uh, NFL playoffs? And that would be 2010. When the Patriots lost to the Jets and the Falcons lost to the Packers. There you go. Asked and answered. All right, Kyle. Um, that's it. That's the end of today's episode. Um, we're going to record a recruiting episode right after this. We're going to take a, uh, a preview of the 2024 class. So that's some deep nerd shit right there. Um, Kyle, pick one or two. Just, just say one or two. Two. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band uh, called Signals Midwest. They are from Cleveland, Ohio. They're one of my favorite bands from the uh, Cleveland area. So stay tuned for this, this song. Um, if you're listening to the audio version, all you have to do is nothing. Just keep listening. And if you're listening to or watching the YouTube version of this, there'll be a uh, link down in the show notes where you can click that link and, and listen to the song. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Signals Midwest. <laughs>